Well, one of the characteristics of a free market system like we utilize here in the United States is there is very limited to no interference from government. And as a result of that, the, the private sector is, is on their own to kind of determine not only what the price to charge for certain items, but also what to produce and how much to produce. And that really is dependent upon what we call the market. And the market is a collection of buyers and sellers, right? So together, we, through purchasing different goods and services, we determine not only what should be produced, right, but also the quantity and the price that should be set depending upon how much we purchase of something. And so there's a couple of key ingredients there that the free market system is really dependent upon. Uh, and those are what we refer to as supply and demand. And supply and demand are terms that you've probably heard before to varying degrees and, and in different, uh, different circles, if you will. And a supply, I'll define both of these real quick. We'll talk about a couple of different uh, laws that are very important. And also we'll, we'll go over some, some graphical uh, examples so you can kind of see how it, how it looks here and how it plays out. Uh, but supply is a, a relationship. And, and very importantly, it's a relationship between two very important variables. And those variables are the price of a good and what sellers are willing and able to provide. And so there's a couple of key things in this definition here. Uh, the first of which is the price of the good. And so we know that that's an important component, ultimately what the price is, what is going to be charged. But that there is a relationship between that price and what sellers are willing and able to provide. And so willingness first denotes desire. And so a desire to produce something. And we know that desire isn't necessarily the same thing as action. Uh, and that's where you get the second part of this definition with regards to ability. Ability denotes you have the means necessary to produce it, which could encompass the skill set, could encompass the financial means necessary, the capital, the equipment, all of those different things necessary. So you wouldn't necessarily factor into supply or being able to supply something unless you not only had the willingness, the desire, but you had the ability or the means necessary to do that. Okay. Uh, now demand, demand is very similar to supply. Uh, it also is a relationship between the price of an actual good. Uh, but where they differ is demand is the relationship between a price of a good and what buyers are willing and able to purchase. So they're very similar for the most part. Now, you'll see this willingness and ability come up again. Obviously, willingness denoting desire, right? A desire to purchase something. Uh, but ability coming along the lines of we have the financial means necessary, the time necessary to purchase product XYZ. So unless you have both components, you wouldn't necessarily be considered to have demand for something. Okay. Uh, now, there's two important laws that dictate supply and demand or that that describe its behavior ultimately and the first of those is what we call the law of supply and the law of supply very basically uh, states at high prices so let's say prices are increasing the end result is that Sellers, those that sell goods and services, will produce more of something. Okay. And as prices decrease, sellers will produce less. 
And this should be almost kind of obvious, right? As a business, you know, if you can charge more for something, of course, you're, you're not only you're going to, but you're going to be more willing to provide a greater quantity of them because they're selling. And, and on the other flip side, if you can only, if you can charge less and less and less, you're not going to be as willing to provide as much simply because there's not going to be enough to support your margins and different things. Now, if sellers had it their way, they obviously would only provide something at the highest prices. But we also have to consider one thing, and that is the law of demand. Where the law of supply is a very inverse relationship between price and quantity supplied, the law of demand is an inverse relationship, meaning as one increases, the other actually goes in the opposite direction. And so just to give you a few examples, in the, under the conditions of the law of demand, as the price increases, the quantity that, that buyers will demand actually decreases. So buyers will demand less. And on the flip side, as prices decrease, buyers will demand more of something. And this also too, too shouldn't be too you know kind of earth shattering, right? Uh, as we you know go about our daily lives and we go to different stores and things, if things are on sale or uh, the price has been reduced, discounted, if you will, then we're going to demand more of something, or we'll demand it one altogether. But we may purchase more of it if we can acquire more of it for uh, a cheaper price, of course. So if we had it our way, consumers, we would want to purchase only when things were at the lowest possible price. But there's a fundamental problem here, and that is, of course, is that these businesses that are providing the goods and services need to make a little bit of profit so they can continue to operate. So both parties can't necessarily have it their way. Now, we look at and we display this graphically uh, for the purpose of essentially studying the movements, if you will, and the relationship between price and quantity demanded. And so what I want to do is show you real quick uh, what looks like a uh, supply curve and a demand curve. And so first I'm going to draw it here, this short graph here. And on this axis here, this is going to be the price. Okay, Obviously price is going to be increasing on this line. And so let's say we have $5.00. 10, 15, and let's say 20. And on this axis, this is going to be the quantity demanded. And then increasing, of course, going to the right. Now, the The supply curve will look kind of upward sloping like this. And the reason for that, of course, is because of the law of supply, right? As we move up, as the price increases, suppliers are going to be willing to provide more of something. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna provide more of a particular item. Okay. And on the other side, though, we also have to consider what us as consumers would actually pay. And so the, the, the relationship between price and quantity demanded, right, denoted by the law of demand, is very inverse. And so it would move to something like this. And so it would actually move in the opposite direction. And so what this means is that you have to have a, a starting point or a equilibrium point is what we call it where ultimately the price that suppliers or sellers is going to provide is going to be the equivalent to what we as consumers will demand. And that is actually denoted by this intersecting point right here. Uh, this is what we refer to as the market price. Uh, may also be referred to as the equilibrium price. They essentially mean the same thing. But it's the point at which they're equivalent. And so if you look at this, you would basically state that, okay, at this particular point, we would demand 
x quantity of goods and we would be willing to pay you know seven eight dollars or so for a certain number of goods but at the same token from a selling standpoint they would also supply right quantity supply they would supply this number at this price so they would also be willing to put forth that number of products at that particular price now it doesn't always work out that simplistically right that's a very nice example it works very well just for understanding uh, unfortunately it's very difficult to determine but what you need to take away is that the market is what drives this equilibrium price right as a producer if you establish a certain price and you realize that there isn't a great demand for it, that likely means all of the things held constant, that you need to lower your prices. And arguably, that should increase the demand for that particular item. And so those are some important things to consider with regards to supply and demand. Suppliers by no means want to produce too much of something, right? They don't want a bunch of products sitting around becoming obsolete, becoming damaged, and getting stolen. On the flip side, though, they certainly don't want to produce too little because that can lead to a lack of supply, which can cause consumers to become frustrated and ultimately go to other businesses for the purpose of purchasing products and services.